Greetings, mortals, and welcome to The Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am your dungeon master, or should I say, your Therosian chorus, Ruben Bressler, and these heroes are my players. Please feel free to introduce yourselves. We'll start with uh, we'll start with Jordan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and uh, I am here today once again after a long delay playing Astarok, who is a uh, a Minotaur from the Boros Guild in Ravnica, and he's also a fighter who has an axe that I can't find, but normally I carry with me so I can do <laughs> choppy motions and stuff. Uh, but you'll just have to imagine it's here. Uh, and yeah, that's me. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> well, actually, what level are you? Oh, I'm level eight now, which is one level higher than we were last time uh, right. we did stuff here. So, yeah, that's fun. Nice. Also, Jordan, do you remember what god Astarok got uh, attached to in the one shot? I'm pretty sure that just through answering the random questions, I, I ended up with Arois, right? The uh, The... God who follows the the Boros uh, colors. So victory, yeah. I just kind of nailed it, like right off the bat. Right. <clears throat> Perfect. Uh, Riley. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Riley Silverman, and I am back. I'm excited. Uh, I'm playing a new character for this branch of the campaign. I have, I have. For those of you who watched Ice X Machina, you know that Velma Sweet has kind of been retired as a character and turned into an NPC slash some a bit of a demigod. Kind of hard to play that as a player in a game at this point. Uh, but I, my character's name is Safia. And she is, I used a Triton build for her. So mechanically she's a Triton, but I am a giant fan of the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything that allows you to do a little customization for your character lineage. And so my character is a, uh, is a Nyxborn um, who is, I'm using the Triton build, but I'm kind of considering Nyxborn to be her race. And she is a cleric and she is a follower nice. of Thassa. And I'm excited to get to know her uh since I don't, I don't know her either yet. Uh, and speaking of not knowing her, I also don't know Lydia, who's going to be played by uh, Danielle. Uh, hi, I am Danielle Radford. I am playing Lydia. Um, Lydia is a human, uh, and uh, Lydia uh, loves the sea. Maybe, maybe too much. Maybe romantically. Maybe it's a little <laughs> bit weird. Um, Lydia is a follower of uh, Thassa, and again, maybe a little too much. Maybe it's a little bit weird. Uh, and she's also sweet as pie and dumb as punch. Wow. <laughs> that. And she said, "Brandy, you're a fine girl." <laughs> <laughs> what a good life this would be. No. <laughs> that I is, got my life I'm... and my love. I'm so excited to see how that plays out. And, of course, Ashlyn. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashlyn Rose, and I play a Luxodon cleric. She is from the Selesnian Conclave. Um, but she's kind of adventured farther from that, as you might see. And I'm trying to stall as long as possible. Well, wait, wait. But... Sh should we really quick give Danielle a heads up that this is a thing oh, we do? This is happening? I kind of got a little bit of one shot. I think she'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, and her name is Tuturu. Tuturu! <laughs> uh, yeah, and I am super excited to be playing her again. I think she's definitely uh, grown a lot over the seasons, and I'm excited to bring her back and uh, see, you know, how she got here and what what she does while she's here. So, And I'm excited for her to meet new people. Me so, too. Yeah. This is uh, a long time in the making, um, and I'm just so happy that we are are back playing Dungeons and Dragons together. And I'm so glad that you've uh, decided after a year plus hiatus that it's something you're interested in doing. So uh, I'm I'm so happy that you're all you're all here and at Saving Throw, uh, of course, who is our home, uh, decided that uh, you know they they give little old me another shot at trying to tell a story and uh, and I'm excited to tell this story with you all. So before we get into the action. Um, I would like to, first of all, thank many of our uh, sponsors. First of all, uh, 
Noble Knight Games uh, has a lot of everything from Dyson Minis to an amazing selection of vintage, hard to find, and out of print releases, and they ship globally. And within the United States, any order over $149 ships for free. You can also trade in and trade up. Why mess around with Craigslist and eBay when you just want to clear some shelf space for new games? Go straight to Noble Knight Games when you want to cash when you want cash or store credit for your new games. They'll even cover shipping to send your games in. Use the command exclamation point NKG in chat for a handy link and use the code SAVING10 for 10% off any order of $10 or more and complete your quest at Noble Knight Games today. We are also sponsored by Hero Forge. You can create your own minis at Hero Forge Minis. I, I, I've made dozens of goofy characters. I've made my LARP characters. I made Claw for uh, Dice Ex Machina. Uh, and it is just a, an amazing, um, amazing program. And you should definitely check them out for all of your mini needs. Um, I also would like to thank uh, one hero who wishes to remain anonymous this season, who is our guest sponsor. Uh, several months ago, uh, when I was looking for sponsors to bring guests onto the show, someone approached me and said, I would like to sponsor that, but I don't want credit for it. So hmm. um, all appearances for guests on the Broken Pack for this season are thanks to that benevolent benefactor. So thank you. Oh, um, and thank I'd also you, like, Yes, thank you. <laughs> and I'd also like to thank my writing partner, Phil DeLuca, without whom, as usual, I would be totally lost. Uh, and I also want to thank you all, uh, you know, because our loyal fans and followers have stuck with us for a while uh, since last The Broken Pact was on the air. But your passion and excitement and um, yearning for our program never really waned. Uh, the Discord channel kept popping. The hashtag kept seeing action. The VODs and the podcasts kept getting downloads. Um, so thank you. And uh, now let us dive in to the world of the Broken Pact, Theros. Episode one, Solidarity of Heroes. We open on a crab, staring into the water from the side of a pier, looking at its reflection. The ocean's waves lap at the old wooden post, hiding and revealing barnacles and seagrass, ebbing and flowing back and forth. The crab motionless and calm until suddenly it strikes and catches a small fish and then it scoots back up the post its meal in claw scuttles across the dock and towards a keel boat moored a short distance away named the moray theros is a plane where deities and religion are tangible devotion not a mere abstract concept but real conceptual Gods and demigods walk among mortals. The realms of the afterlife and of the pantheons physical are physical locations and can be gotten to with some effort. Fate and faith are manifest in Theros, a realm governed by the gods more mortal than perhaps they like to admit. It's a place where destiny can be written. The room you're in is dim and humid. Hard packed sand is beneath your feet. There's a door behind you, heavy and locked. Before you is a portcullis 
closed and dark with a short hallway leading to an arena beyond. You can hear and feel a crowd chanting and cheering, enjoying the festivities already underway. Shouting of soldiers and the gnashing of beastly teeth can be heard. You are in a room with three other people. I assume only one of whom you recognize. Would you care to describe yourselves? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, okay. Well, thank yeah, you all for yeah, yeah. We'll see you next, next season. I mean, yes, I am a, I am probably the most oddly placed one there. Uh, I am a large uh, elephant like creature person thing. And I am kind of huddled over probably, you said we're in like a, what are we in? It's a small room. It's probably 10 by 10, 15 by 15. Uh, looks like a holding chamber of some kind. Okay. Well, I'm going to be probably over in like a, not a corner, but like sitting down next to a wall and uh, huddled over. Is it cold? No, it's actually quite warm. Oh, well then. Uh, I'll be <laughs> comfortably sitting and probably trying to keep cool then. Maybe like flapping my ears a little, like trying to cool off. And um, yeah, I'm a large elephant um, person and uh, kind of tired, weary probably anxious looking and uh, looking about twiddling and poking and yeah, just kind of sitting there next to my Minotaur friend, Astarok. So I, I think Astarok would be sitting next to Tudor who would just be like, all right, come on, Tudor. We, we don't have to be too worried about this thing. I mean, come on. How many times have we been thrown into some sort of trial by combat either for a favor or because we asked to do it or because we were thrown in prison. I mean, I'm old hat at this stuff by now. I've been doing trial by combat longer than we've been doing any of this, like, you know, world tree hopping stuff. This is like, this is home base, you know? It's not Ravnica, but the rules are probably about the same. Um, but, go but, ahead. But we didn't do anything wrong. Like, we, we shouldn't even be here. We were just trying to help people. Like, those people, like, God, we should be helping find the, the stuff. Like, what are we going to do? Someone just lost all of their belongings, and it's our fault. And we, oh, my gosh. Yeah, look, Dudru, we got played for rubes. I know it doesn't happen that often to you because you're a lot smarter than I am. But, you know, it's, it's happened a couple times to me, at least, you know, back in the day. All I'm saying is, you know, usually you fight your way out of these things, and somehow it, yeah, you, you at least get an opportunity to get out. We'll we'll say our piece. I mean, uh, it seems like the, if you get trial by combat, there's at least a way out. You just gotta win, right? Yeah, but are we gonna have to fight them? I'm sorry. Hello. It's awfully rude of us. Hi. I'm Tuturu. Now let's be careful about making two good friends in case we do have to fight them. I mean, I'm just saying, no offense, other people in this cell with us. No, no, I get it. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, you don't want to be like too buddy buddy. Murder. And not, like, murder us. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, he said we, it. I was just going on. Are we point. getting murdered? Oh, no. again? No, no, look, look, no, nobody's actively murdering anybody. I don't know that much about the society you all have set up here, so if they expect us to murder you, we might have to try. But not if it's I not something we want to do. Yeah. So what you see over on the other side of the room is uh, a, a woman who looks fairly human, uh, has long hair that is a mix of like blues and greens and purple and gray tones. It all kind of weaves together. And she is wearing kind of what you would think of as like typical Greek, like that kind of like sort of like proto toga kind of stuff where like, it's like a, it's like a tunic almost that kind of goes down and it's very flowy and it's all shades of blue. And she has a bunch of dangly necklaces and clunky necklaces all around and like a bunch of bracelets. Ruben, do we have our gear? Uh, yeah, you have your gear. Okay. So she also has a staff that is made out of kind of like a blue agate crystal that has been, have you ever seen like 
um, sea glass where like after a while it has that like fogginess to it. It looks like this staff has been like formed over time by the ocean itself. In like, so it has that like fogginess. And then her necklace hat, one of her necklaces has the exact same color of like stones on it. And she has like little tiny bits on her face where the skin seems like it's almost like turning into like, like, like glittering scales, but like, isn't like, like her whole face isn't like that, but it's like a pattern where it's almost like she's transforming somehow. Um, and yeah. Um, and sitting next to her is, uh, another human, um, dark skinned average, uh, holding, uh, or, uh, uh, was at one point holding a rapier. Uh, this human is probably a little drunker than one should be um, on any occasion, let alone an occasion where you're out uh, in the world with other people, um, wearing a blue tunic, brown hair, pulled over into a plait, um, and kind of wobbly, maybe occasionally a little leany on Sophia. Um, and not totally feeling good or understanding exactly what's happening in front of her. <laughs> oh, and so I, I don't want to be rude, but you're an elephant person. Elephant? Mm, yes, yes, I am. What? You're a I don't wanna I don't wanna call out the elephant in the room, but you are literally the elephant <laughs> in the room. And I just I I'm sorry if that's offensive. I don't know. Like, is that is that a slur? I don't know. I'm sorry. I just you you look very. We don't see. Is that like a? Did you piss off Nylea? Is that what happened, or is it like a no, curse? No, or... no, no. I'm I'm a Luxodon. You don't have Luxodons here. Okay. I th I think you I think you think that answered my question, but I hope you know that it didn't, Lydia. Do you do you know what a lexodon uh, is? A uh, lexodon is, um, I think it's like a bunch of paper where you hold all of the important names and numbers that you need. No, I'm going to say that's not what she is. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say that's not what she, I know. No, no. And then I, I kind of just like put my hand in like Lydia's hair and kind of like, no, no, it's okay. It's not. I, I just want to say Astaroth doesn't get it, but that's a very good joke. <laughs> it is a very good joke. All right, teacher is going to lean over to Astaroth. I'm beginning to think Luxodon probably aren't common around here. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm getting the same vibe. I mean, thank God they got Minotaurs, right? Yes. Oh, we have lots of Minotaurs. Oh, okay. Up to here with Minotaurs, yeah. There hmm. is a raucous cheer from uh, the arena, and uh, one of the outer doors to the arena opens, and so more light sort of comes in as uh, some shapes uh, emerge into that doorway, sort of outlined. Coming towards you, you see a huge lumbering centaur woman, uh, maybe eight feet tall, covered in scars and tattoos, um, waving to the crowd, and she's chomping on a carrot. Uh, next to her appears to be a very small, probably three and a half or four foot tall, returned a uh, person in a gold mask, um, wielding, uh, dragging swords, uh, two swords next to them and sort of just like um, creeping along and they're waving and, and um, the centaur woman says, oh, thank you so much. This has been lovely. Thank you. Oh, hey there, new friends. First time in the pit, hey? Well, good luck out there. How's it going? Eh, not too bad. It um, I, I believe there's been a mistake, actually. See, we are we didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> we were framed and we we don't belong here actually. So if we oh, can actually sure, keep sure. going on our way. I've heard I've heard that one before. Um we you can you can like uh I think that they have like a suggestions box. Um might be a little late for that right now, but uh but it's um you know you're gonna have a chance, so that's gonna be great. Looks like you're the main main event this time around. That's exciting. Not good, but that's exciting. Great. Hey, hey look, uh, this this might be a long shot, but I, I've I've got this uh, I've got a piece of paper that that sort of like vouches for my character and, and my integrity. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, can I like well, show it? So it's signed by like an angel, and you know they tend to do good stuff. Oh, an I angel. Don't think they have that those here. Yeah, I, I am not, I don't think I've seen um, angels, but I mean, there was an archon that attacked a little bit ago, but um, that probably wouldn't help your case here. Uh, um, archon's always good, like, can't tell lies, do good stuff kind of mm, deal. 
not really, no. Hmm. Well, it was worth a shot. I also can't read, so I don't know what that says. Um, they don't really, that's not really a thing that I need, uh, back in the band, you know. By the way, uh, my name's Three Kills, uh, because I had three kills this one time. Uh, but don't let that scare you, I'm a nice lady, most of the time. Uh, this is Yorod. Uh, they're returned. Don't, don't let that scare you either, though. They're pretty cool for a dead person. And Yorod just sort of groans and... Mm -hmm. he's, he's like that. Carrot? Offers you a carrot. Oh, oh, I thought you were... I oh, thought no. you knew someone named Carrot. Yeah, um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm pretty nourished. Thank you. Um, you know what? Do you have bread? My friend could use bread. Like like any, like any, a pita, anything. My friend could Fresh really use like anything to soak bread up myself. whatever she's Didn't had. bring any into the arena. Maybe one of the gods has one. Uh, yeah. God! God! And you know, I, I, I hate to play into stereotypes, but I'll take that carrot. Sure, sure, sure. Hands you, hands you a carrot. Uh, she is a humongous person, by the way. This is, I mean, you know, in addition to being a centaur, is a large centaur, even for centaur standards. Um, a sort of portly, hairy human guard comes over and says, hey, what do you want? What, 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 what do you want, three kills? Um, these nice folks were hoping that you maybe had some bread. Bread. I mean, I've, we got some. Let me go get some flatbread. Hold on, and uh, the guard will go get some. We'll leave. So, how'd you all nice folks end up in here? You said you were uh, you framed or something? Yeah, well, we were framed. The two of us. We don't know these people. How'd that? Uh, how'd that happen? <laughs> yeah. huh. Well, uh, we were trying to help some people load their goods on their boat, and it turns out that they're, those weren't their goods that we loaded onto their boat, and when we returned to get paid, uh, we were arrested for helping steal Look, someone else's goods. They mm. seemed like they were on the up and up. <laughs> I mean, I normally have a pretty good sense of people who are criminals and people who aren't, but it turns out the lingo is all different here yeah. than in Ravnica, a city you haven't been to. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, I feel like I was totally out of my element, you know? Is that, is that up the coast a bit? Yeah, a bit. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> right, all right, all right. Well, that sounds that sounds rough. I'm sorry for that. But, um, you know, rules are rules, as they say. And, uh, well, the rules here are, you know, you get arrested and you break their rules. And you got to go in the pit, I suppose. Um, oh, and, and these are your friends? These two? Oh, we're not with them. I mean, they're nice. You seem nice. That wasn't like a rude. I wasn't trying to. I'm sorry if that seemed like I was being mean to you. You seem very friendly. Oh, no, I just no, was letting. Not... I'm sorry. I get off... okay. I get awkward and big. You're doing sorry. great. We we don't really know how the Thank system you. works here, so in case we have to fight them, we're trying not to get too chummy. Oh, oh! I don't think that you're going to have to fight them. Uh, usually, they put uh, they put just four people that they you know whoever's next on the list, and they put them in, and then they uh, they got to face down Kirby. It's pretty oh. much what happens. Oh, well, yeah. then, hello, I'm Astarok, and I turn and I offer my hand to shake hands with uh, Lydia and Safia. Oh, oh. <laughs> Lydia, Hi, Safia. nice to stuff you. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. Is that a local saying? All right. <laughs> Hi, teacher, nice to no. stuff you. Hi, teacher, nice <laughs> to stuff you. Lydia, that's a, Lydia, it's a little, it's a little uh, forward. Look, we're not going to be here that long. We might die. I say we party and we eat bread. Who's party bread? Yeah, we could get if we could get a round of bread. Partying and right eating bread is yeah. great. Speaking of which, hey, God, is you back with the bread yet? And you hear the guard say, hey, oh, "Give me just a second. We're not looking. We're not really heavy on on bread over here." You you seem rather uh, well versed around here. Do you do you work for this facility? Oh, sort of. Um, I'm sort of working off my time, you know, because I got arrested as well, just sort of like you. Um, and because uh, I killed three guys, uh, different time. Uh, sort of one of them quinky dinks. Um, but I, uh, you know, I, instead of putting me into the main event, uh, I was like, you know, maybe you put me into the early fights, you know, sort of entertain the crowd a bit. And uh, and that's sort of what uh, what I and Yorod uh, have been up to. Uh, and Yorod is really not, like, almost not paying attention, but at his name or their name being referenced, sort of scans around for where it could have come from. Uh, and three kills goes, yeah, so we're sort of just here. I got nowhere else to be, really. Um, I'm a renegade from my band, so I'm uh, sort of just having having, having a lark, you know, just having fun in the pit. 
Um, I, I uh, do make, meet new people uh, sometimes like this. Unfortunately, a lot of them ain't getting out. Uh, they sort of came to the end of the line, as I suppose. Um, but some of them have gotten out. You know, you beat you beat Kirby and you're able, or you beat whoever the main event happens to be that time. Have to ask Lorem if they're updating the uh, who, who the beastie you got to fight is. Um, but yeah, I, that's sort of what I'm doing here. Been here a couple months. Wait, so you're not like in the jail? You just hang out in a fight to the death yeah. just for the fun of it's it? It's great fun. Um, I mean, I am in a jail, okay. but I'm not in a jail like you're in a jail because you are fighting for your freedom, right? As opposed to me, I'm fighting kind of with the jail until I decide I want to leave in maybe a couple months. I think I've got a couple months left on my sentence if I do it this way. So, but you've got to, you've got to fight, the, you know, whatever comes through the gate, I suppose. Which is Kirby. Which is Kirby, yeah. What do you know about, is Kirby also an elephant person? You know, or like a I'm not person? exactly sure what Kirby is. Um, Lorem is who you're going to want to talk to uh, about that. But all I know is nobody's beaten Kirby yet. Uh, brought him in a little bit ago. Uh, I haven't had to fight him, thank goodness, because <laughs> that would be that would be a tough fight for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, and I don't really watch Kirby's fights, you know, because I'm backstage. That's typically after I'm done. Um, it's possible that Petros knows more. He, he likes watching the fights, and she gesticulates towards the guard that's bringing over a handful of pita bread. Yeah, well, this, this might this oh, might be a really dumb you. question because I, I ain't got a lot of context and. This world, but there's no chance Kirby's like made of plants or anything like that, is there? I don't. I I don't know. Again, I haven't fought Kirby. I've heard Kirby, um, but I don't. I don't know too much about Kirby. All right, because if he's made of plants, I'm in trouble. Other than that, most of the time it's I can kill. It's pretty things. hot around here and dry. I'm sure you've noticed, um, and. And then she pulls out a Boda bag and like takes a sip and is like, yeah, I, I, I feel a little parched myself after that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would I would doubt that Kirby is made of plants. Great. I'm sorry, that's a very specific question. So now I have to ask, what is your thing uh, with plants? Well, to the room. Well, it's rather simple, really. He was cursed and tried to kill me. So yep. I, when we... We, we uncursed him. Thank I you, got by the him. Way. You're welcome, and thank you for not killing me. We got him a new axe, and that axe happened to be made so that he cannot uh, hit any plants or harm them. It ain't good for getting firewood, but it's pretty good for everything else. Oh. Yes. An axe that can oh, like cut trees. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Is it, though? I mean, trees are rather lovely, and they do are a part of life and are alive and have feelings and can feel things, so why harm them? And historically, they've attacked us way less than most other things. So this is true too. Actually, that that's that's really good, Astor. I just I just know that in my history with axes, I tend to use them on trees. That's like kind of why axes were invented. I think. Well, but there is like a battle axe and a tree. I, I feel like that's you don't true. Send warriors to fight trees because they don't tend to move. So you don't like need like a skilled fighter. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a fair point. Maybe I trees are different axe. here. I'd punch a tree in the face, right? Oh yeah, I, no. I could find a face. She just like does your like she does like is like no, sweet, no, no friend, pal. It's it's okay. She's not wrong though. Um, That's what you gotta do if your axe don't work. A stack of pita bread lands in the dust and goes. Poof. Is that, is I was that, looking through yeah. all my power to see if I could create water because I was gonna give water to Libby if I don't I don't I don't have that with this. I know character. I was telling that too. <laughs> Could we actually get some water as well? I mean, if we're if we're going oh to my like, God. see something that's going to kill us, possibly, we want to put on the best show as possible. I'm so. missing the fights. I'll get you some water. Hold on. And uh, yeah, Petros wait. goes off to get some water. And Seems like if a... he just got in the water to begin with, he wouldn't have missed a fight. You know what I mean? Uh, that's yeah. his fault. So wait, water. Are we going home? Are we going back on the ship? He said water. Soon. We will. We will go very okay. soon. Once, once we and these people apparently kill Kirby, um, yeah, that's what you know. We'll get you. We'll get you back to the ship. I'm ready we to go back there. to the sea. This land stuff is so confusing. You've got 
impossible trees that you can't cut and there's like a fight outside that I don't understand. I am ready to go back onto the sea, please. Yeah, I want I want to go so bad. Well, all you'll have to do is uh, is uh, you know, you got to fight for your freedom. That's the rules of the pit, eh? You have a ship. Yeah. I mean, we Yeah, yeah, we have the best. We have, we have the, the best, ship. best ship. It's so cool. Ooh, it's called Murray. We, uh, what, uh, what pre by the way, I didn't hear your story. How'd you end up in here, by the way? If you don't mind my asking. It was an accident. X. No, go on. That's a good one. Hey, that's funny. I just, look, it, I, there was all there. Look, I like, look, hey, I'm looking. Wait. It was, I accidentally might have sort of kind of stepped on somebody's shoe and broke their foot. We were having a good time. We're in port. And you know, when you're in port, you got to do what people in port do. And all of you people do is drink. So I, we, we went to go hang out. It was very much mm -hmm. fun. And then it was a lot of fun. Okay. It, it was so much fun. And then this stupid guy is like, hey, you hurt me. And I was like, hey, <laughs> not I can't hurt you emotionally, only physically. And he was like, Well, it was physical that you hurt me. Um, and then he punched yeah. me in my face. I mean, face. you had at that point, to be fair, you had pushed him down and jumped on his leg. I, I mean, he did have a valid point. Mean, I love you, you're my you're my bestie, but you did do that. Like he just had a crunchable leg. What am I supposed to do? He was mean. That's a good point. He was he was very mean. That is that is true. But you did I think the term they used when they arrested you was assault. Assault. I can't look. I hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I hit a dude and then maybe I broke one of his leg muscles or leg legs. And then maybe I also hit somebody else in the face. And then maybe I maybe took out my sword. I didn't mean it, but maybe I maybe took out my sword. And then mm. maybe somebody uh, called the the people and then they put us in here. That might be what happened. But it I sounds about right. I mean, I hey, I've been there. there. And then I just did, I didn't want her to be alone. So I came. Well, sounds like everyone here is pretty innocent. Hey, eh? hey, you're on. Huh? And she like. Hits Yorod on the shoulder, and Yorod goes, eh, eh. <laughs> Is your friend okay? They seem, do they need healing? I can help heal them. I, I do. Oh, have... I think, um, uh, Yorod's, I, this is just the way Yorod is. Um, you, you could, I mean, Yorod, do you want, would you like some healing? Yorod <laughs> looks up at, uh, Tuturu and wanders over and, like, looks you up and down and does, like, very, aggressive sort of like a like a parrot would sort of like head oh. bobs and it's sort of like eh. and then just sort of like shows you a gash that they have in their neck yikes Ooh. Ew. Uh, uh, yeah i, yeah, I, yeah, not, I don't think i can, I can but i you. i can put a bandage on it no okay yeah i'm just gonna go back and sit down yeah, Yura shrugs and walks away. Um, three kills is like, and I, I like mine. You know, adds character. You know, so uh, it gives you a story. I'm sorry. I said it gives you a story to tell. Exactly, scars are like tattoos with stories, and I have both. So. Hey, I agree. Or like all this three, whole, actually. This like came off of a guy's rib cage. Believe it or not. Ooh. Wow, that's that intense. Is, that's that is very that's intense. Lot yeah, I barely remember it. But, you know, when you wake up and part of your horn's gone, it's like, what happened? I drank too much last night. I don't really do that anymore. You well, should. It's I'm, fun. <laughs> it's not time, when I it's do time it. For me to, uh, it's time for me to go back and get, uh, as much as I like these, I do have to have the doctor look at these. Um, I will grab Lorem for you, though, so that Lorem can come and talk to you about uh, Kirby. Um, since I don't know too much, but uh, I, they have to put me back in my holding cell, I think, because um, I see. And, and Petros is like has has uh, water at the gate and is waiting impatiently for three kills. Oh, that's for us. The water. That's, that's for, for us. Friend. The water. That's for my. Yeah, finger. the water's for you. Here you go. Here's some water. I take yeah. the water and just start chugging it. Okay. Oh, well, that's you. that's there you go. 
That's oh. hopefully that's enough. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I do like a little quick blessing, like a little vasa. Like I kind of like take my like my necklace and I kind of like like do like a thing when she drinks the water. Like the water is a blessing from our god. So, Vassal worshippers, I just can't believe whatever. Anyway, three kills. Yorod, get back into the in the cage, Shrewd. And they and the gate opens slightly, and uh, the two of them walk through, uh, and they say, "Well," and uh, three kills says, "Well, it was lovely meeting you. Um, I hope you all live. That's going to be, uh, and I hope you all get out. That would be that would be lovely, right?" Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah nice. that's the plan. Uh, three kills. You, by the way, you mentioned you were in a band. What what happened to your band? Oh, they're still out there. They're somewhere somewhere out in Lagana territory. Um, oh. You know, I sort of am off on my own little, doing my own thing for the time being. Um, might might go back, might not. I haven't really decided yet, but uh, having a good time here at the pits. So um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know? Alrighty then. I'm off on my own adventures, you know, <laughs> meeting interesting people like yourselves. Anyway, good luck. Um, uh, have fun. Um, and, uh, and don't die. And yeah, three hey, kills. Yes. That would be the yeah, most fun, die. I think. Actually, I, I got a question for all you guys. Well, what happens here when you die? Do you guys have ghosts? Because I ain't seen any ghosts. Um, you know the guy with, you know the guy with yeah. the mask? Yes. With the, the gold mask? That's sometimes what happens when oh. you die, but, like, it's mm. frowned oh. upon. Also, where are you from where you oh, don't know I mean, what happens when people die? Because that's a weird thing. Just, again, it's kind of along the lines of like elephant person and, and I can't attack eight plants. So like you're just saying things that are very strange. We, I, yeah. mm, mm, <laughs> hmm. we, we need to huddle really quick. We're gonna we're gonna huddle. Okay, I okay. Okay, I did not expect that to be I, such a complicated answer. Rock, um, yeah. I don't think we should tell them that we can like travel between play like i i don't know how do you feel about that i just i don't know that you no. know that's kind of a big deal yeah I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with you i just like i i sort of you know don't always don't, remember I, that yeah i get it but what, what should we do i honestly have no clue what to say now i i think i got this okay okay, okay. Okay, hi, we're back. We're from like while you guys while you were awkwardly whispering, like Sophia didn't know what to do, and so she was kind of looking around, and then she kind of like was like dabbing Lydia's chin and like getting water that was like spilling out as you're like chugging it. <laughs> like, Thank <laughs> you. I pick and I pick up a piece of bread and I just hose it into my mouth. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we, we're from like that way, but like real far. Which direction are you pointing? He, he, pointed, like... he, he picked a direction and he pointed and then he dropped his hand so that he didn't have to back it up. Okay. Uh, I think she's like, I don't know. Like, this, like, you this, know, like, like all like the coast? way, like or even, the... even further than that, you know? Or Akros? I mean, you're a Minotaur. Are you from, are you? Yeah, further than that. <laughs> Trust okay. me, it's, it's, it's far. Yeah. Do you know how to fight, by the way? Are you, uh, are you too comfortable? Uh, going into what we're going into? I, I mean, my friend did. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, I didn't mean to. Um, but, sure, but, but if you like, had to meet him, could you? Yeah. Yeah, I think we could probably handle that. I think I think I could probably. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think we could. Great. We could work with that. From down a hallway, you hear a yowl. And emerging, coming from that noise is uh, a man in a toga. Uh, balding, has like the, the, the Caesar ring of hair around. And a pair of tongs. And in that pair of tongs is a very large uh, tooth. <sighs> man, these fights are just not good for Kirby's teeth. It's just not good. Oh, hey. Uh... You all, uh, uh, three kills want, said that you wanted to talk to me real quick, maybe? I'm Lorem, by the way. I'm the animal handler. Nice to meet you. Hi, Astra. Uh, tooth, tooth. That's Kirby's tooth? Yeah, I mean, it's he gets a little overexcited sometimes. Um, he's, you know, he, uh, 
his fights just aren't good for him. Fortunately, they just grow back. You know what I mean? Like pretty much immediately. He's got a rose of teeth. Like how immediately? Like if we fight him in the next uh, couple that's hours? super fortunate. Um, This tooth will probably, you know, push its way. The, the next row will probably push its way forward in the next like couple days or so. But he's got like three or four rows of teeth back there. So he'll he'll be fine. All right. So okay. So he's not. So he's not an elephant person. Yeah. Got that checked. Okay. Who told you that they were an elephant? Oh, we, that you're nobody. You're... Nobody told me, but I asked a question, and then three kills couldn't answer yes or no to what seems like a question that should be pretty easy to answer, um, which is happening a lot today. So I was waiting for you to answer it better. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, three kills. I don't think. I don't think three kills and Kirby are gonna are gonna you know, tangle. They keep three kills, you know, in like a box when, uh, when she's not working. Uh, not and, and Kirby, well, you know, she's under arrest. She, she's a criminal. So that's, uh, that's sort of how that works. Um, and, and Kirby, you know, Kirby, we, we sort of, uh, we sort of, uh, rescued Kirby kind of, um, uh, from the underworld, of course, but you know, he was, uh, he was malnourished and he was a little bit, uh, underweight and so, you know, we brought him back and he he just loves playing here and loves being loves being part of the show, you know. What does he eat? Kirby? Oh, anything we feed him. Uh mostly meat. Uh he tends to enjoy. Um, you know, uh uh, uh whatever whatever they he can get his jaws on. Um, you know, he he's got to feed for 3, you know how it works. No, but that's all right. <laughs> Um, a important question that I don't know why I have to ask until today, but is Kirby made of plants? No, 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 I was, no. I was going to ask the same thing. Kirby's not made of plants. He is made of rocks, I think. Okay. I don't really know much about the physiology of what Kirby is, um, but he he uh, he's kind of made of like magma, sort of, and rocks. Mm. Although if it's above the, if the, now that he's out in the sun, I guess he's made of lava as opposed to being made of uh, magma. But he's made of like rock. He's like hardened rock. Did you Ish. just kill actually yourself? Yeah, kinda. A little bit. I okay. do that sometimes. I'm a little bit of a. I, I'm. I'm just really fascinated by the by the physiology of the animals of of uh, of the world, you know. And I don't really get a chance to to see to see animals like like uh, like Kirby very often. So. Do you do you like Kirby? Like, are you and Kirby like tight? Like, you like like your buddy? I... Like you would like want him to survive. Yeah, I love Kirby. Kirby's great. So um. What's up? What about it? How is there like a thing that makes Kirby like fall asleep? So like, let's say that for people who would, would prefer not to die, but also not to kill a living creature that you think is so cool and sweet. Um, what if like we could like put him to sleep oh. and then we could go and then Kirby is like, oh, he made a recovery. You, he's, you, he's good. you think and you then, can, you think you can beat Kirby. That's cute. Um, if, well, I mean, I don't know if I can or can't, but I feel like we're being asked to, and so I just thought like maybe there's like a win-win scenario where everybody's happy. Absolutely. I think that there absolutely can be. Um, you know, uh, Kirby loves uh, livers. I've noticed that Kirby loves eating livers. Um, Yorod, the, I think you just met Yorod, his liver grows back every day, so we just sort of take the liver out and feed it to, 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 to Kirby. Um, Kirby nice. gets real distracted by, by that gets distracted by shiny things, real into like toys and like tinsel. Um, I and like, uh, for that, you know, like mirrors, mirrors and things. Uh, Kirby, you know, Kirby just really likes performing. You know, he likes the fights. Um, he does play rough. So don't be afraid to play rough back. Um, <laughs> it plays rough. That's funny. Um, you'll see why. Um, but he, if, if he knows you're playing, then maybe he'll play with you. You know, if you are, if you're fighting, then he's going to fight you. But if you're playing, maybe he'll, maybe he'll play with you. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't tried. I'm not really a performer myself. I just make sure that he's healthy. How, when you how, say, go ahead, how, sorry. how does one contain Kirby? Like it, obviously it sounds like Kirby is quite a, a, a lot to work with and it sounds like it'd be quite difficult to keep Kirby in this facility and whatnot like how does how does Kirby stay here like does Kirby teach Kirby commands or how does that work yeah we we sort of we well you know Kirby uh well we rescued Kirby uh, as a as a little one and uh you know he knows that we feed him and give him exercise and lots of enrichment 
for, you know, a, a growing, growing boy like he is. Um, and so he, he, I guess he's just sort of decided to stick around. Um, but he does have like a little roaming on un, like under, under the stadium. Uh, he's got like a little roaming area that he can hang out in. That's closer to the, to the, to the under, under portion, you know, out of the sun. Um, because he likes being down there with the, with the darkness and the rocks and, uh, and, and likes to rest down there. So I think that he sort of has sort of chosen to stay, um, cause he likes the fights and he likes that we feed him. All righty. You can't fault him for that. I mean, fighting and feeding. Yeah. It's a heck of a, it's a heck of a, it's a heck of a life, huh? You know? Yeah. Uh, so I've, I'm just going to be him clear a couple tricks, else. tricks though. He does know, he does know sit. Um, he knows, he does know play dead, which is good, which is useful sometimes. Um, oh, how do I make him play dead? You, you have to, <laughs> you essentially have to, get, so you can like give him a little hand signal and say play dead. Um, but you have to, like you have to this, say this it. The hand signal? Yeah. And, and so far I've, I think that he just understands all languages. Like everything we've thrown at him, he just oh. sort of knows, which is Whoa. pretty great. Yeah. It's pretty, and you it's were pretty, able to teach him that? Yeah. I You're mean, so you know, we get along. I, I take care of him. You know, I pulled I pulled this tooth out, um, you know, and he, he trusts me. Um, so if you build up some trust with him, maybe maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll let you live. You've been really nice and helpful. I thought you'd like want us to die or something. As long as you put on a good show, that's what's important to me. Because the boss wants a good show. That's all. That's all that. Uh, that's all that she cares about. So. Oh well, as long as we don't die, I mean, like I can put on a show. I mean, I usually make, like, most people who come in. Stuff. Sorry, what were you saying? I was just saying I can make like noises and fires and stuff. If that like pyrotechnics, oh. we can do that. Like that's fun. I, I mean, tried crowd, a little bit of stand up at here. one point, but it was pretty catered for having a group that was made up mostly of Boros and Selesnians. So I don't know if it's gonna fly here, honestly. I don't I don't know what a Boros is, but um that sounds great. But what I'm what I think because because the crowd that's here is here for fights, you know. So as long as you put on a good fight, uh and and, and you know, they want blood. You know what I mean? They like they chant blood, blood, and they want, you know, they want like carnage and stuff. And and Kirby delivers that really well. I guess I could um, try a little bit of Rakdos stand up then. That sort of fits. I also don't know what that is. Um, but sure, if you think that it'll work, uh that then that's great. Um good luck. Uh yeah. Any is there anything else I can do for you before I get back? Could you let us go? No. I, I I'm just the animal. Okay, I'm the animal handler. I, I can't I can't do that. You'd have to talk to one of the guards, it's maybe. Try you ask. It's a good question. A question. It's a good I question. Answer, Might as well ask. Sure. Like, how great would it have been if you could have said yes? Like, if you were like, "Can we do anything?" and I was like, "Can you let us go?" and you were like, "Yeah," I would have felt dumb if I hadn't asked. So that's a fair point. It was worth a try. Well, um, it, 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 they're they're probably done cleaning up the previous fighters. Um, off of the off of the off of the stage there. So uh, I, I hope that you all uh, uh, have fun uh, um, and and maybe survive. But also, uh, you know, you won't fault me if I root for Kirby a little bit. Okay. Um, hopefully, hopefully that all helped. Um, yeah. Bye. Bye. And he sort of wanders off. Like and who I was that nice. again? What, what was that? Who what, who was that again? That was uh, Lorem. Lorem Ipsum. Yes. <laughs> Here's a question. He are they he closing and locking this door behind them at any point in time? Or are people just wandering into our cell and talking to he us? He was talking to off? you through the door. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Right. That makes more sense. That yeah. makes a lot more yeah. sense. So three kills <laughs> and Yorod came from the direction of the arena, then were escorted out through the door by Petros. Okay. Uh, and they closed the door behind them. And okay. Lorem was wandering past your holding cell and talked to you through the, the bars. Okay. Um, Petros is, is there uh, and is just sort of checking his timepiece um, and says, well, looks like you, you all are uh, about to go in there. 
Um, I also am not going to let you out in case that was a question uh, so that you don't have to ask. So uh, can, can you just clarify a little bit like what, what the rules of this conflict are? Because we're getting a little bit of conflicting information. Like it seems like we're supposed to die or kill, but also there's a performance element. I think someone suggested yeah. I do stand up at one point. No, I don't think you should do stand. I think that was. You. I don't know if I, I would have suggested, suggested that. that. Well, the, so basically, the way it usually goes is they let people in, and then they don't let them back out because they don't have to because then they made a mush. They get they get pounded into the dirt, and that's a good show for most people. Hmm. Mm. Seems for the top. Yeah, just like eight, the eight, same listen. thing. Like, right? person goes in, person gets crashed, and then they die. And it's like, oh, maybe people want to see something a little more exciting, like a dude named Kirby being put to sleep. I think that sounds awesome. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I like. I like. You know, the friends. occasional upset. I think would be uh, would be exciting. It would keep things lively. I think that the boss would find that interesting. Uh, I just know that most people who get caught are like pickpockets and tax evaders and people that don't fight very much. So <laughs> if you think that you got a chance, then then that's gonna be that's gonna be a good show. Maybe looks like we're in trouble. <laughs> and my friend got got caught for literally fighting. Oh, good. So that seems like a good. We had a couple of bar TV. brawlers get caught uh, recently. They were they were buff dudes. Uh, yeah. They uh they fought Kirby maybe a week ago. They lasted like a good like thirty seconds against him too. It was great. Oh great! Um, oh. Yeah, well, I've been a cop and a bouncer, so I can handle people who can handle bar brawlers. Does Kirby just like come out chomping, or how does yeah? Yeah, he comes storming out of the gate, you know, because he's uh he's like a real animal. Um, and you know, even though he gets fed a lot, Lorem does a great job with all the animals here. Um, he's, he also enjoys the spectacle, you know, he likes putting on a show. He's a smart boy, uh, that, that Kirby, uh, it's really surprising, honestly. Um, but, uh, I, I think that he just enjoys the, the performing and making the crowd excited and playing. You know, it's sort of, it's sort of, uh, it's sort of an enrichment activity for him. Okay. Like he could leave if he wanted to, probably, I assume. He's massive. Hmm. So you got it. You got your bread. You got your water. You ready to go? Sure. Why not? I like leaned over to Lydia. I'm like, does it seem like they all like kind of want to get up on Kirby? They're they like super mean. into Kirby. It's like a little weird, right? I thought it was just me. Well, we yeah. like Kirby because okay, yeah, we live in the same build. Like this is a business. He's like our mascot, you know? I mean, I've lived in buildings that people- Kirby's that got like all, fans. I guess I get you, you go out there, you see him on the signs and the pendants and the shirts. He's, you know, the, the, the people, you people are- you know, a, uh, like a like a like a meal for for him. We work with Kirby every day. Look, I'm low key worried that I'm gonna kill Kirby and everyone's gonna hate me for it. Yeah, I'm gonna feel really bad if we kill Kirby. If you, and I don't want to feel bad. I, so so like if you beat die. Kirby, there are uh, uh, contingencies in place to make sure Kirby doesn't you know go back to the underworld. Um, to, you know, we've got we've got stadium, and you too as well. By the way, if you all get completely destroyed, um, you know we are just going to put you in jail. This is an opportunity for you to get out, but we aren't going to. You know, we, you dying doesn't help us in any way because if you die, you just go to the underworld, and then you're somebody else's problem, right? So we have to heal you and then put you in jail. Yeah, all right, that sounds good to me because I don't want to end up. Driving any more cars and and having to talk to coins that are that have the dead people in them, and then you feel bad when you got to put them into your car. <coughs> oh, that bread uh, went down the wrong pipe. Oh, really? Right. Your name was, your name was Astarok. Words. Yeah, no. Astarok. I can tell you, I can speak like literally any language, and I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm sorry. We have just been traveling and are tired. And sometimes I think Astarok like has really weird dreams, like lucid dreams, I think. 
Is I, is that's what I don't know. I, I get hit in the head a lot, you know. <laughs> so oh, yeah, the horn, the horn thing. Mm, oh yeah. Yeah. Or something. So well, um, you know, I there were a lot of angry cats. Yeah, I hear a lot of those animals. Yeah. <laughs> They, we got a lot of strays yeah. around the city. They, they, you know, come in and out. Uh, they tend to stay away from Kirby, though. Very, very generous. <laughs> yeah. So, so Kirby's from the underworld. Cool, cool. So that's is that's, he? Is that what is that what Lorem said? I didn't know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So we're gonna meet a, a Kirby thing. That's great. Can't wait. Yeah. Yep. There it looks like it looks like the cleaning crew is almost mm -hmm. done. So uh, you good on water? You good on bread? I'm gonna go now. Okay. Bye. Alrighty. All right. All right. And Petros, as we like, no, you're good. Okay. Petros so go just—I go was just gonna say Petros is does not care anymore. It pretends you aren't there and goes just wanders off. Okay. I look at Lydia and I go, okay, I think you're, I, I was holding on to it until you could behave, but I think it might be a time that you can have it back. And I open up my bag of holding and I pull her rapier out of my bag of holding. And I give it back to her. Like I had hidden it when she was being arrested and now I'm giving it back to her. And then I take my own rapier out of my bag and put it on my side as well. I was hiding it from the cops, but now I've, now I've got them back out. Again. Uh, I, Lydia, I look so. at uh, Lydia looks at her rapier and is like, oh, you beautiful thing. Kisses it a couple of times before she puts it uh, in her holster. Tuturu and Astarok, have you ever okay, seen you gotta... a bag of holding before? I don't... Yeah. Probably. Probably. We... Okay. We have I... something like that? Yeah. I think Velma, Velma have, have one? Okay. It was our spoiler card, so I'm assuming yeah, we saw it at some oh, point. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We did spoil bag of holding. True. I remember that. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> so. I can tell you in a second. So, yeah. Safia pulls out a... Uh, oh a bag and much like in Mary Poppins, uh, it looks like it holds much more length than it should as multiple long weapons come out of it. Hey, neat. Ooh. Yeah, I did that because like, you know, she was being arrested and like a lot of times, like people who arrest you aren't giant fans of you having blades on you. So I was like, what can I do? Oh yeah, I had this thing that hides. No, yeah, so just, let me tell you, I've arrested a lot of people and most of the time you take away their weapons. I'm surprised I still got this thing. Yeah, maybe it's because they actually intended us to, to attack and mm. fight things to death, so. Yeah, that makes sense. So it sounds yeah. like this thing is... I don't. What? 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 I, I, it sounded like you might have a plan as we go in here. S Sophia was. Was it? Am I saying that right? Sophia. Yeah, Sophia. 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 Yeah. Uh, my plan was just: is there a way to put this thing to sleep? Or I'm going to try this the play dead thing. See how that works for me. Yeah. And um, I, Kirby likes shiny things, so if I flash my rapier, I can attract him over with my shiny thing, and then. And then I I I've got my axe. I I could just hit it a bunch of times. Or is that is that not not the direction we're going with this? It sounded like if we try to fight it, it might try to fight us. Sure, makes yeah. sense. They did say something about like not killing it and letting it play with us, but I also don't know if like it might think playing with us is still killing us. So True. I I yeah. Well, Look, it, it seems like the three of you have some sort of plan in mind, so here's what I say. When we go out there, I'll just avoid hitting it until you need me to hit it. And then you guys just go, Astrock, hit it. And <laughs> I'll do that. It continues I to be an option, like, pretty much as long as we want it to be, you know? Do whatever you think. You, you always have a great instinct, so do whatever you think you need to do. Yeah, yeah, you guys tell me if I need to hit it. That's, okay. That's just where I'm at here. <laughs> okay. Okay. At this point, the crowd... I'm going to let her be in charge of who you hit or not, because I don't know you well enough to feel like I have that kind of power over you, but I'll let her... I'll let your friend tell you who to hit or not. Sure, that hit. sounds good. And I can help heal anyone, so if you feel like you really need some help, um, the best I can do is help support you in any way possible, so please don't hesitate to let me know, and I can help. Oh, thank Thassa, because I can heal too, and I feel like I always have to just like do the healing and I don't have to like do the fun stuff. So if I can like if we can like split the healing, that would be awesome. Yes. Uh please have all the fun you want, and I will help. 
And also, I remember Velma did have a bag of holding because I remember I shoved Solias into the bag of holding because oh, he didn't have right. to breathe. So I was oh, able to contain right. him in the bag of holding. All right. All Sorry. Right. Continue. Yeah. At this point, the crowd quiets. Um, a voice of someone announcing something is heard. You can't quite make out what's being said. But after a moment, the portcullis into the arena begins to open. <sighs> All right, let's do this thing then, right? I put my hand on uh, Lydia's back and I cast Guidance on her. So uh, the first uh, action that you take before the spell is for the next minute, uh, you will get, for your, ne your next action, you will get, um, I guess only an ability check, it wouldn't be an attack, but you'll get a plus four, so a, a plus a, a D4. A D4. Uh, yeah. And Initiative does count as an ability check, so... Oh, I great. think attack there rolls do too, actually, now that I think about it. But okay. in any case. Yes, you as DM, if you're calling that, I'll let you all that's that's Sounds your call. It's great. Any D20. So yeah, then you'll get to add a D4 to your next roll, basically. Awesome. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna guidance up as well, um, Asterok. All right, if you need to run, may uh may and she'll look around and she'll kind of whisk lean in and whisper, Miss Lesnia guide you. Got it, thanks. And Asterok will uh just like polish his his little boro signet and then be like let's do this and he's going to activate heroism on that and like a light glow kind of appears around him and it makes him seem noble and strong and i need to look up exactly what heroism <laughs> does again <laughs> <laughs> but it does that perfect as you emerge into the bright sunlight you see a crowd uh, of a couple of hundred uh, cheering. You see uh, fans and uh, people waving uh, pennants and people are holding up signs and clapping and cheering and wooing and whistling. Uh, on a central main stage, you see a well-dressed satyr on a raised platform. And he uh, quiets the crowd down and he says, Friends, Therosians, countrymen, we now present our main event. Please welcome the hopefuls. And the crowd, you know, applauds politely, essentially, because um, they're not here for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind wow, of a cold, kind of a little cold there. Uh, it's chilly. Uh, and yeah, then look. the crowd quiets down a little bit, and they wait with bated breath as the announcer turns to the throne, upon which someone is sat um, awkwardly with one leg over an armrest uh, and their elbow cocked on the other armrest. They must be human because there aren't elves on Theros, but this person has an ethereal, otherworldly kind of vibe um, they are of indeterminate gender, um, and they are sort of nonchalantly looking off and picking their teeth. Uh, but when they notice they're being spoken to, uh, they look up and, oh, 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 it's time. Oh, good. Excellent. And they sit up and they sort of perch on their throne with their feet on the seat and their hands on the seat as well. And then they nod excitedly at the announcer. Um... And then they turn to a, a human next to them and says, go hit the thing, hit the thing. And there's a human next to them wielding a mallet. Uh, and they use it to ring a large bell on the side of the stage. And the bell dings. And the announcer, Seder, proudly proclaims, it's time to begin. And under the dais where they stand, you see a gate lifting. And from within it, you see six glowing eyes of molten red. You hear the growling of three angry mouths. And you see emerging from the darkness a massive Cerberus, a three-headed hound of the underworld. And it comes tromping into the arena. Roll for initiative. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, oh, my God. I rolled a natural 20 for my initiative. Nice. Actually, wait. If we're going to use the roll 20, I will use the roll 20 instead. I'm going to use real dice. Yes, me too. I don't want to switch tabs. Okay. Yeah. I will keep mine as well. 
because I rolled yeah. <laughs> I'll, I will keep mine because I rolled real dice and it, I don't like to fabulous, re-roll fabulous. on D on D if it's a bad roll. I don't want to be like, oh well, I want to use different. Um, so, I use my... so I have a two. Well, here my is is two. The players are. Um, does everyone have control over their minis on the on the? Um, I do on the overlay. Let me add. Let me see. Nope. Sure don't. Okay. Let me add. I don't see the other coconut. And by the, the person, the person who hit the mallet, would you say that person was a mallet? <laughs> oh, I just exited. Mm. I did not mean to do that. My bad. I, that may be. That may be. I I, I don't have a token one? yet. Okay, let me. Okay, Ashlyn, you should have yours now. Let me do another. Asterok, it looks like you do have one. I don't see it. Jordan, it would be under the newspaper. If you look under the newspaper icon, that's where the character lists are, and you should have one there that you can drag on. Oh! Bob. And Danielle, I will get yours going as well. Okay. Because I don't think you have one up yet. Or I had, hadn't made one for you yet. Hmm. What is my password? Okay. I believe that is everyone. Why yes. I keep switching. In in our chat, Dom said that Callista was obviously yeah. in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't put my my dude okay. there. Let me. You might have I to can, do that, and then I, I can may move have it, to maybe. do that. Yeah. Where is said newspaper right. thingy? Oh, I see it. Uh, boop a doop. Okay, yeah, I see. I see two uh, where two Yeah, two trues out there. Okay. Oh, there's there Leah. I am. Ha <laughs> ha. And there's Asterok. So, on this uh, map. Um, Ignore the one square equals 10 feet. We'll say that one square is five feet just to be, uh, you know, uh, make it easier. You are emerging from underneath what is called the awards platform on that side. So choose somewhere on the, you know, within 20 feet of the entrance from the awards platform to begin. And uh, emerging on the other side is uh, the Cerberus. Which I can't move my character. Yeah, I think you have oh. to like grant it to us. Okay, I will do that. Yeah. Apologies. Roll twenty, everybody. Well, yeah, it's also Ruben because I'm not very Rube good at twenty. This. Rube twenty. Bio and in. Yeah, I will, I only have it because I was walking Ruben through how to set the map up, and he I showed him he did it to me when I was teaching him how to do it. So. Ah, I added it to in players journals and not to can be controlled by. Yep. Back. That's fine. <laughs> okay. One thing while we're while we're hey. playing with roll twenty, um, if you can go back to the map and change it, because remember you 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 set on the map, Ruben, that one square is ten feet. Oh. So if anyone tries to measure, it'll be off if they're not gonna. Ah, be yes. Uh, hmm. I will need to figure out how to do that. Maybe maybe if it maybe we don't have to worry about it too much. Maybe no one no one else would be able to do that anyway. And I can do the math. So okay. Um, and then. Here is Kirby. Hi, puppy. He's that big. Oh, mm. puppy's big. No. Puppy is large. Yes. Big does old. everyone have con Does everyone have control over themselves? I do. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I do not. Yep. Okay. Let me get two true. I weirdly have control over. Yeah, I just clicked. Here. I just pl kick clicked. All players have control oh, over okay. certain okay. people because yeah. it's no faster. That's fine. So, all right. I should probably. Oh, there we go. Now I can. I can control myself. Um, let me <laughs> roll my. <laughs> That's a sharp. Oh, it, it was on an oh. eighteen, and then it rolled over onto a four. <laughs> oh. No. Uh, if, you, if you click open the one that has the clock on it, we can fill our initiative while you're doing other stuff. Click to the one that has the clock on it. Hey. On the little toolbar? Yeah. So. And then, okay. We can write, yeah. So then, 
Um, All right, so I can. If you like add a turn on our on our tokens, if you, if you right click our tokens and click add a turn. Oh, cool. Then we can. I we can fill in will our do that. Thing. No, Sorry. you're good. Right click, add turn. Cool. Oh, we got some high initiatives up in here. Oh, that yeah. Sarcasm. Yep. Uh, I don't know why this is named this. Oh, we can't see it anyway. Just it's just blank one of it. I okay. guess technically if we're all low, it doesn't really matter because it's just us versus the thing. So. Yeah, it yeah, goes so. first. That's the important part. Yeah, it, it rolled a natural 20, so it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and how do I add my initiative to this? You just click on the number and just type it in. Oh, excellent. I get a plus one to my initiative, so I have a 21. Okay. Ooh. Zoom in. Yeah, well, good for you. <laughs> Where's yes. Astarok? Man, the house is so stacked in favor of this Kirby guy, it's not even fair. How do I add <laughs> initiative? You click on the oh, actual. Oh, you're not in the thing. Oh, did I not give you a yeah. turn? Yeah, Astarok's not added. And add then, turn, Danielle, you'll have to end yours manually because you already rolled before he put it up. Sorry. Um, yeah. uh, Boom. My my bad. Seven. I'm a brand new roll 20 year. So. There we go, yeah, baby. I am two. It takes some time getting it. So click click on the number where like the zero is. You click on that and type in and press enter. It should show up. I ran one game in roll 20, and coincidentally enough, they fought a Cerberus. Ha! There you Ooh. go. Look at that. So Ruben, is this Cerberus made of rock? So you look at this Cerberus, and it is not made of rock, okay. but it, it appears to also not really be made of, like, flesh and skin either. Okay. Um, it appears demonic, I would say, although that doesn't really mean anything in Theros. Um, and it, but it does sort of emit sort of the... You know when the surface of lava is black and sort mm -hmm. of like sort of stretching like taffy? That's sort of what its skin looks like. Ooh, okay. It's still a puppy though. It's a good boy. Very good boy. Um so oh Lydia got an 18. Uh Kirby is gonna go first. Um so if you click on the on the gear. You can say descending order, and then it'll Excellent. start with the highest and go down. Oh, it didn't save my... And then you can just click through that arrow. save my number. If you Great. do it again, it'll reset it. All right. There you go. And then you that use that arrow to go It down. is going to be Kirby's turn. Kirby has... Uh, boy, he sure does have a lot of movement. Um, he's going to charge 60 feet straight at these new people who've entered the arena. Um and probably there-ish. And he's gonna use his breath weapon. Because he has a breath weapon. Cool. Uh, he exhales a 30-foot cone of molten rock. I need each creature in the cone, which I believe is all of you, to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh boy. Ooh. Is Lydia in it? Yeah, I think it, it, either Lydia or I would not be in it based on if it's 30 foot. Oh, sure. Um, it, it would be the people uh, in the entrance. So okay. Lydia so is not Lydia. in it. Everybody who doesn't have guidance is right. not uh -huh. is in it. Okay, cool. What kind of saving throw is it? Dexterity. Great. Oh, no. What kind of... Um, uh, what does it hit? Because I have resistance. Natural 20. The DC is a 15 dexterity save. No, sorry. A natural 20. What type of thing is it, I guess? Oh, I guess I can roll first. Um, let's see. It is a breath weapon, and it is... Um... I got a 17. Okay. okay. Th that succeeds. I rolled, I rolled a 3, and I have a minus 1 to my deck, so I okay. rolled a 2. All right. So, uh, those of you who save you take half of this number those of you who do not save will take 6d6 of fire damage and something else will happen Yikes. so we'll start out with uh take 22 or 
11 fire damage. So you take 11 even if you saved, right? Correct. You take 11 if you save. Okay. And, and, and just sorry. because I, I looked up earlier and, and I had forgotten, her heroism gives me basically three temporary hit points each round for a minute. Right. Okay. Which is like 10 rounds. Great. So uh, that the, the gout of molten rock comes out in a cone and hits the three of you. Two of you are able to mostly dodge it, but two of you take the brunt yeah. of this uh, gout of, of lava. You are also restrained by the hardening rock. Um, so you, are, you have a movement of zero. Uh, you can make a strength check as an action to free yourself or a creature within reach from the rock on a success. Uh, and the rock also can be hit and destroyed uh, in some way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, up next is Lydia. Okay. Um, I, I'm, am I close enough for... Uh, am I close enough for an attack, or do I need to get closer? You are about 20 feet, 20 based feet away. Math. Yeah, based on the math. Okay. Um, then I uh, I guess I'll dash over to where he is. Okay. Um I can't see in here. Let me see. I think this is right. Okay, I'll dash over. Um, and then I think I can also do one of my attacks, right? You sure can. Awesome. Okay, so I take out my rape here. And I rolled a 10 for damage. 10 is not going to, or rather it would hit, but your sword sort of clanks off of the hard exterior of Kirby. Damn, ow, 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 ow. I imagine that reverberates right up my arm. Oh, mm. crap, ow. Yep. It's like walking into a telephone pole in cold weather. It's not oh. does not feel good. Dang it. Um, so that was only 20 feet of your movement. So you do technically you didn't have to dash. So if you have something oh, else you'd like to do, feel free. Um if I have something else I'd like to do, can I do another attack or no? Or I can do I don't know. Do you have multi-attack? I don't have multi-attack. Okay. Um then then uh, that'll be it. Okay. Sounds good. Astarok. So Astarok looks around and goes, yeah, yeah, so what's the deal? Are we fighting? Uh, hey, any of you folks ever heard of a Rakdos charm? Apparently that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> but I ain't never met a Rakdos with no charm, am I right? Uh, all right. <laughs> and he's going <laughs> to try and pull his uh, pull his legs out of the uh, out of the the molten rock. So you saved, right? Oh yeah. So I'm not stuck. So you're not, but Tutoru is. Tutoru is. Okay. Then I'm going to use an action to try and uh, get Tutoru out. Okay. You may do so. Make a strength check for me. Okay. I'm usually good at strength. Uh, that is a uh, that is a fifteen total. Fifteen was the DC. So. Tutru, you are no longer restrained as Astarok is able to pull you free combined with your uh, ability to pull on his arms as well. Um, you sort of combine to be able to get out of the uh, the hardening quicksand-like magma. So he he pulls uh, Tutru out. And says, so well, what's the plan? Do, do I hit it? Do I hit the thing? You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I don't know. I think, he, I think he froze. Who, me? Oh, no, you. Okay, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ow! That hurts! Um, I mean... Okay. Quick, quick, quick decision! Quick decision! Do I fight? Yes, hit it! I don't know. I don't want to Okay! Hit okay! <laughs> Gosh, do what you need to do and we'll figure it out like we always do. Great. Uh, uh, so <laughs> Astarok has pulled Tutu out with his action. So he is going to uh, turn and then just grab his axe and just run at the thing. Okay. And um, 
So I use my my uh, movement to get as close to it as I can, or to run. Actually, not straight to it. I'm going to run kind of around the side. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and I I'll do that on roll twenty because that's a thing we can do, which is like five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, like that. Sounds can I go good. That far you can. All right, and then because. You know, why not start out in combat like I do every time by blowing all of my resources? I'm going to immediately use my action surge. Fabulous. And, uh, and take take a, a effectively another turn. Yeah. Uh, so then I will close the gap with this thing. Astarok, you know, just kind of runs in a circle around it and then grabs his axe and sort of uses it like on the ground to like do kind of a a quick turn sort of thing, leans mm -hmm. towards it, <sighs> snorts out of his nose, and just runs at it and leaps up and just yells and goes, ah, sorry if everybody likes this guy. And then I'm gonna <laughs> come down and take two attacks on Kirby. Awesome. I like you alive more, Astrock. Thanks, Tutu. <laughs> uh, so I will take uh, my first attack on this with my axe, which... I uh, I rolled a 16, which puts it at 25. That hits. Oh, boy. Uh, and then I will do 1d12 plus 6 damage. Let me grab my d12 real quick. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, all right. So that does 17 damage. Woof. So the axe sinks into the giant Cerberus back, and he pulls it out and goes, all right, not made of plants. We're good. <laughs> and he's going to try and attack it again. Uh, that's even better. That is a 27. Yeah, that's a large number. That was an 18, and I crit on a 19 or 20, so I was real Ooh, close yeah. there. So close. And that will be, that's 14 extra damage. Okay. <laughs> Putting the herd on already. Nice. All right. And, Somebody else pull this up, please. You are up on it. Uh, and that's your turn? Mm-hmm. All righty. Next up is... I have too many things open. Next up is Tuturu. All right. Tuturu. Tuturu. Question. Yes. Through my experience of traveling many places and experiencing many different um, interactions with creatures, does this look like an animal? No. Dark. Um, it is friend-shaped. It is vaguely dog-shaped, but it does not look like it would quantify as an animal. Got it. So if one would want to try to speak with it, it would... <laughs> it would probably fail. Although, okay. apparently, it speaks all languages. It's true. That's true. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so I had a plan, and so I need to relook at the spell one more time. Um, so I wanted to cast Protection from Good and Evil, but I wanted to understand. I was trying to see what happens if I cast it at a higher spell slot, but it doesn't show that, like, it expands on how many, like, does it increase the amount of people I can cast it on? Because when I try to do it on D&D Beyond, it doesn't increase the number. Hmm. Weird. Um, let's see. I'm Is sorry. it equipped? Do you have the shield equipped? Huh? Do you have the shield equipped? Does it, does it equip? Does it require attunement? No, no, no. Protection from good and evil. I think it doesn't level up. I think that I it's think not it a spell up, yeah. that you can cast it higher. Than oh, I don't know why it's showing me like level one, two, three. That's so weird. Oh, that's hmm. weird. Oh, it, oh, it's because you can cast it at a higher spell oh. slot if you want to use the spell mm -hmm. slot for that. You just don't get benefits for it because it's just, it's, it's just it's just if like you're, if you're out of first level spell slots and you want to use level oh, two spell slot, you can. Oh, okay. That's cool to know. Okay. It okay. might change its spell DC? No. Okay, cool. No, Good to know. Doesn't. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, on that note, I will. Um, did Lydia? Did I see Lydia get hit while I was no, trapped you in did lava? Not. 
Lydia uh, has sort of skirted around the outside and put themselves into a position to have not been hit by the lava at all. Very cool. All right, I am going to run up to... Oh, Astarok ran really far, like he does. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. My speed is still reduced, I'm assuming? No. No, I, I pulled you out. No longer reduced. Cool. Yes. Um, I am going to 5, t- I already moved one, so we're going to hold, hold our little... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, so that's technically not 50 if I'm measuring. Okay, it's cool. 25. Yeah. 25. I'm going to move. Mm, stop that. I'm going to move behind Astarok. And I'm going to, because I think it's a touch spell, um, if I'm correct, and cast. Yes, it is. I'm going to cast protection from evil and good. Excellent. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to run up. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, nice, Kirby. Hi, Kirby. How are you? It's so nice to meet you. Please don't kill us. We're here to play. This is so much fun. Does Kirby want to play? Uh, and... Yeah, great time. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to get Kirby to talk. Kirby, is that your actual name or is this something they gave you? And uh, one of Kirby's faces is very distracted by Astarok, but the other two turn to you and have big slobbery tongues uh, and like sort of real expressive big black eyes. And they just like go, uh, ar, yeah. Ar, 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 ar. yeah, uh-huh. you speak, mm-hmm. you speak common, right? It looks like he under, uh, he understands you, and the heads both nod. Okay, okay, Sophia, you see that? And then I'm going to cast uh, protection from Sophia, right? Sorry, I'm going to... Sophia? Sophia? Sophia. Sophia, okay. I'm just... I am doing those things yeah. where I trip myself up. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, protection from good and evil. All right, Astaroth, please Thanks. be careful. <laughs> uh, also, thank you guys in chat for the raids. Uh, we've had raids from... Hard oh, Knock yes. Dice, Dice Tyrants, and Level 1 Geek. Welcome, yes. everyone. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for the Thank raise. For I, I am woefully awesome. bad at <laughs> paying attention to anything that isn't what's directly in front of me. So thank you, Jordan. Um, Happy to help. All um, right. So, so yes. uh, Astrock, you are protected. Um, so basically... Um, do, 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 do. certain types of creatures, aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Ooh, um, nice. Essentially, they have disadvantage on attack rolls against you, and you can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Uh, so, yes. Nice. Excellent. And I will end my turn there, okay. I think. Yes. It is now Safia's turn. All right. Um, I am going to. I don't know if you've already used it or not, Lydia. But I suddenly you feel that bl- that guidance that I gave you uh, drop because I am casting a new concentration spell, and I hold up my staff and I start to chant and I start to cast and oh, I put right, my did staff. Lydia, did Lydia not go? I went. No, I. You I, I don't think she used her guidance, so I'm, I'm making sure that I, I'm dropping the guidance because it's a concentration spell. God. Um, so I'm casting a new concentration spell which is banishment and i need i need kirby to make a charisma saving throw oh no he's not particularly charismatic let's click the button here and see if it if it does it well that's a, that's a that appears to be a 2 minus 1 oh <laughs> okay. no well the dc was 16 so uh kirby has gone and gotten himself banished and oh, no. here's the thing that i'm curious about ruben because yeah. this is a thing that you will have to determine as a dm you running theros because right he is from the underworld Do, it, now i don't know if in terminology of DD or not if that counts as another plane of existence yeah because but technically it, it does, might just hit me instead no <laughs> what no what happens is um so you attempt to send one creature that you can see within range to another plane of existence, which I would I would send to if, if the target is native to the plane of existence you're on, you banish it to a harmless plane that you create. Sure. However, Let's... if the target is native to a different plane of existence, it is banished to its home plane. And if I can keep my concentration for a minute, it never returns. It stays in its home plane. 
I see. I see. Let's have a let's have a theory discussion. <laughs> I am of two minds on this. On the one hand, it is an underworld Cerberus, native to the underworld, but it is the underworld of Theros, and we mm -hmm. are on Theros. And I sort of, and you can travel there, of course, under much difficulty. So it's sort of the same plane. It's sort of a different plane. Um, what do you think? I think we should roll a d20. And if it's <laughs> 1 to 10, then it stays in the underworld. If it's if it's 11 to 20, then it can come back after a minute. Great. Um, who would like to roll that d20? I will, since it's my spell. I agree with that. Woo! Okay. All mm. right, chat, come on. It's a five. So we agreed that one to ten, it stays, right? Is that what we said? Then, yep. then yeah. yep, that's yeah. where it is. <laughs> Boom. So then I hold the spell, and then I I I have to hold the spell for a minute. So it's a concentration spell. Okay. So I'm gonna mark that I'm concentrating and I have to hold it now for um that's ten for turns. One minute. So, yes. So if anybody else comes into the arena to attack. Now I so I I say to my party I'm like I have to hold this it's very important. The woman up on the stage uh, gets off of her. She's sitting. She's back to sitting with one leg up and and stuff like that. She stands up and she goes, "Hey, hey, you stop that! You no 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 hold on, you you down there with the with the banishment. You cut that out. Bring 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 Kirby back." Tell us we can go free and I'll bring him back. But 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 that's not that's not the that but the fight. The fight that, that is the deal. The deal is you tell us that we could go free. And I, I'm like very focused. Like I'm trying very hard to not do anything but cat but I'm like very much like struggling. Yeah, what she said. Tell tell us we can go free and we'll bring your thing back, your dog person make elemental a, back. Make a persuasion check. Me or Safiya? Uh, okay, I will do it. Yes, you're oh, gonna yeah. have to do it. Make I just so, no way with so, my concentration make, right uh, now. Do so at advantage because you uh, are kind of holding all the cards here. Alrighty, so. I'm gonna do it with a good dice. All right, here we go. Advantage. That was a natural twenty on the first one. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. Plus seven, sure. so that's twenty-seven. All right, all right, fine, 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 fine. Fine, we'll let you go, okay? Just let, just bring, just bring the dog back because it's kind of like our, our thing. We'll let you go. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, go but first we're going to walk towards the exit. Yeah, exit's right over there. Okay. That's right, you see it, it's over. It's You, you get to walk free. You're going to be totally fine. Okay, I'm like slowly, yeah. like <laughs> focusing, like. Let's uh, surround her and make sure she gets out. Uh, all right, uh, let's go. So okay, where on, the, where on the right? Is that where it's at? Yeah, uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. To, the, yes, to the right yes. side. Okay, great. So as you're holding it, and all of you are walking towards the exit, um, the arena's confused cacophony of whispers and ch chants and, and talking fades a bit into muffles and then into eerie silence because... You appear to have walked out of the arena and into some stand beneath your feet turns into mosaic glass with browns and reds and soft tans. The horizon stretches infinite in all directions, save for the visages of your four of you, uh, standing around a shallow bowl set upon a slender foot. The bowl itself is a part of the mosaic, but simultaneously it's not. It's three-dimensional with stone pebbles of smoke rising from it. From the ashes and the fog, a visage rises. Sephia, you see, and all of you see, all four of you see, a vision of you, Sophia, and Astarok. What is it? Well, first of all, if, if this is all happening, I drop my concept that, that I'm distracted enough that my drop, whatever the, the spell, so the Cerberus reappears in the arena, wherever that is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Also, uh, thank you for the raid, Fabled 42. Yes. Yes, welcome. Ooh, yes. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I, th I, I, I definitely think that stepping into a new existence and having a weird vision is a reason to drop a concentration spell. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I, just, uh, um, I agree. 
So what are you asking? You're asking us what we see? Yes, the four of you collectively see from the smoke, except for it's like not really smoke. It's like a mosaic of smoke. You see a vision and the vision is of you and Astarok. What is it? What do you think you see? I think I, because I am constantly driven to the horizon. I am constantly on the lookout for distant shores, unknown shores. Um, I think that I see us on my boat, our boat, the Moray. And I think Astarok is on the boat and um, he is maybe looking out onto the horizon with me. Astarok, what do you think of that? I think uh, Astarok sees it and isn't entirely, he, he gets the idea that there's very something very specific that he's looking at in the distance. He can't see what it is, but he can see that the vision of Astarok that is looking out across the thing, like knows where they are going uh, in some way. And then Lydia, all four of you see a vision together, again, as the mosaic shifts and changes in the smoke of you and Tuturu. What is it? Um, I also see me and Tuturu on the ship. Um, I see that I don't look as confident as Astarok looked in exactly where it is that we're going. Um, I definitely look more confused, but Tuturu seems way more confident in where we're going than I do. What do you think of that, Tuturu? Um, Tuturu sees this and is confused um she doesn't really know where what to expect or where to go and she doesn't understand how they will arrive on this boat or what purpose they will um she has she is terrified of water and um <laughs> so she is she is interesting to see what becomes of this but she knows that if if there's a vision of it there is a purpose and she she is going to open herself up to what possibilities lie ahead. The mosaic smoke shifts around and Astarok, all four of you, once again, see this same vision of you and Lydia. What is it? Uh, Lydia and Astarok are both in the, the heights of what appears to be uh, a, a rigging that is so high that you don't see a ship under it, but they're both, but both of them are clinging to uh, the ropes as what appear to be like eagles or some other sorts of birds are just dive bombing them. What do you think of that, Lydia? Um, Lydia feels confident because um, being on a ship's mast that, that gives her confidence, but the birds definitely have her a little worried. Like, why are they being attacked? Uh, she doesn't understand what they could have done, but she feels safe no matter what because she is on. Uh, she is on that mass. She's on a boat. And Tuturu, you see, and all of you see, a vision in the mosaic of you and Safia. What do you see? I see teacher sees um, she, she sees a she's she her and Safia are looking out and they see a storm uh, beautiful skies all around but out in the distance there is a storm that makes it look like night in this one specific spot that is very eerie and unsettling. Um, but while Tuturu feels very un at ease at this, she looks over at Safia, who's just kind of nodding, kind of expectantly. What do you think of that, Safia? Well, I, as much as I don't want to like steal from a very famous quote. I think that Sophia very much has the <laughs> I am the storm vibe. I think that this is her exact, like this is her domain as a cleric 
And also, I think that what Tutaru sees as a storm, Safiya sees as like Nix, it's like the like the Nixian sky, like that like chaotic realm of the gods. Because I think I think that what Safiya is seeing in this image is what she is always pictured when she reads the Califia of like when Calife rode her boat off the side of the world into Nix. Like that is what Safiya is seeing. And so she's got like a nice charge out of it. And from that shifting and changing you see a scene of all four of you together doing what? Mm. All right. Mm. Singing. <laughs> all right. <Yes. laughs> We're singing on the boat. Yeah. We're doing a shanty. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to add to the singing on the boat thing. As we sing, the the islands that are like near us seem to almost be like moving and growing and like shifting as though they are creatures themselves. It almost looks like they have arms that are like reaching out towards the boat. And as those islands collapse into you and sort of swirl around you with the song, uh, a voice rises and the islands that became tendrils shift into the face of what looks like a male. It does have a beard, but it also has a swept back quality, uh, sort of like a lion's mane and wings from its back. Uh, this is the image of a sphinx. And from these visions, the voice deep and resonant says, I am Medomai, ageless and deathless, seer of endings. I did foretell the fall of Elefne in watery terror, mocked by the foolish who say that the voice of the gods is but madness. Great was its ruin and slaughtered were all who did not heed my warning. Brighter the future I now foretell of beginnings, not endings. Heroes are coming who strive against fates please, and who carve their own bright pathways through history greater than all mortal yearnings. Seek the horizon for guidance to your questions, for some have answers at the world's edge. The smoke rising from the silix, or kilix, retracts, and the plumes return in reverse into the mosaic, and the visions fade. And as they do, so too do you return to the heat of the summer sun and the sand of the arena. Uh, Kirby is sitting, wagging its tail, and all three of its heads are looking around, confused as to where it just was and where it is now. Uh, and the crowd and the um, woman on the stage and the announcer appear to uh, be sort of thankful that Kirby has returned. Oh, thank goodness they're back. All right, you all can go. Get out. Just get out of here. Just oh, guards, open the gates. Let them get out of here. Wait, but I, I had a whole other bit that kind of went into like Simic stuff. Don't you know? push it. Don't push it. But it, it, uh, I, I get it. You like jokes about celesbians. I get it. That's that's very it's low hanging fruit. But let's just go. Let's just go. Whoa, whoa. whoa. I know if you. I, I look. I know. I I know. I've dated a few celesbians. We're not. We're not. We don't not known for the best sense of humor. So let's just <laughs> let's just go. The crowd is kind of not like totally happy with how this fight has ended um they sort of start filing out leaving bits of trash behind the like, tutor's, popcorn tutor's gonna turn around if she can before like they leave and see if she can get him to the dog to play dead she's gonna go play dead, play dead. <laughs> Go ahead and make an animal handling check. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see. Uh, ooh, plus eight. That's right. I speak with animals. That's right. Uh, 13? Uh, 13, yeah. Kirby looks at you and sees that you're, like, playing with him. 
and wagging his tail. And he like rolls over on his upside down and its jowls are like flapped up on its face, all three of its faces. And, uh, and he's sort of like got the wiggles and, and <laughs> sort of just, just uh, very pleased. Yes. All right. Now let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Book it out of there. Good job. Right, good, good job, y'all. That was very, that was, that was, you see that you're on? They actually won, sort of, I think. Well, I'm glad though. They seem nice. So hey. here, that was amazing. Oh my goodness. When you said you wanted to have fun as a cleric, please have all the fun you want. Yeah. Oh my hey, god. I had a really good time. That has never worked before. I've tried that like a bunch of times. You can ask Lydia. I've tried it and it usually is like, oh, nice try. And they're usually like, I'm not going anywhere. But so what, what what was that place like with with the fumes and, and that, that guy who looked like the Sphinx guy? What was that? Oh, I didn't. I didn't do that. That I thought. I thought maybe one of you. Mm. You did nope. not. Was that I, I, Lydia? Was that your thing? Oh. oh no, that was definitely not my thing. And she <laughs> chomps on like a hidden piece of bread that she's had like stashed on her. <laughs> nope, not me. <laughs> oh, so uh, we all just kind of stumbled into a weird vision room in the middle of the the battle arena. Yeah, I mean, I I like talk to a god a lot so it kind of happens to me sometimes but it doesn't usually happen to other people so that's kind of fun sure sure yeah no uh weird who that wasn't my god visions. by the way that was not my god mm -hmm. that was like a dude i don't know who that dude was oh okay mm -hmm. okay weird hallucinogenic visions are, are sort of par for the course for us but uh i don't know yeah not so me that was well, my first time i was kind of hoping our god would show up because our god Ah, oh, just mm, makes me all weak yeah. in the knees, you know. Thought so. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, um. So, what are you? What are you two doing? Are you, you hanging? Are you gonna go? Do you have to go back to the? I don't remember. You said a lot of words, and I don't know what they all meant. But we have a boat. If you want to come. Yeah, I hate to say it, but. We should probably take him up on that too, Thru. That's a nice boat. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't love things that don't stay still when you're standing on them. You know how it is. Yeah, I mean, we have. I don't. I, don't, I love boats, so I don't know what you mean by that. Yeah, it's actually kind of cool. Standing on land this long, I think I'm starting to get a headache. Yeah, and also land does not, I, I have found historically, land, especially Therosian land, does not stands it's kind of scary and i actually like being on a boat more way more control boats are really nice like don't get me wrong and like your boat if it, if it was anything like in that vision it was really nice like fabulous but uh there's something about water and the whole like moving it's awesome yeah, thing I guess. that's really yeah. terrifying yeah. and just bleh. Yeah. You guys have like much bigger bodies of water around this area of the world yeah. than we have, you know, that way real far. Yeah. It's quite. So are you like from the Vale or are you from, I don't understand. Like there's not a lot of water, I guess, but. It's just water is really scary and just never ends. And there's just no, things in the water that, yeah. Oh, I'm just cool. Okay, is it hot? Like, it's really hot. Just, and, and I mean, the thing about water is, like, if you go in it too much, you die. There's, there's that thing too. Oh, I don't. I mean, I just breathe underwater. Oh, you so. don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I. We... Lydia has a has a hat for that. I like a, like a coat for that. So. Yeah. Well, you learn something new every day. I die. <laughs> Oh, then I as recommend you don't are, do that. As you are leaving the arena, um, you do you have a few fans. Uh, you know, there are some kids and some you know young adults who are a little bit rowdy. Uh, some of them are are appear to be like asking for autographs, and uh, some of them, in fact, uh, hold up tankards and ba boda bags of their own to give you toasts. One of them, oh. Vampire54, says, A nice night home after work sent us there because of the weather. That's, that's yes. nice. Yeah. So, so Vampire54 <laughs> came to the fights a little bit late, I guess. <laughs> Fine. And of course, where we're with where with all 
gosh, I've missed the broken pack. This show is amazing, and everyone here is just so great. Yay, and thank you. Okay. Fans yeah. of the fight that just occurred. Yeah. You banish one Cerberus, you get famous for it. You know? Yes. That's right. So you are on the streets of uh, a coastal city of some kind. Uh, I'm going to say Data Harbor, which is sort of north e northwest of Miletus. Um, okay. And it's right at the mouth of the river that leads to Akros. I'm going to say that it's sort of there. Smallish town. Not not the it's like the first gladiator fight that they fight in in the movie Gladiator, you know? Ha. Um th that's a reference that maybe someone gets. Um I think a lot of people get gladiator. So, I think uh, like, you know, know it's what an Oscar. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean it's been 20 years, but True. you know, oh, I don't I don't know what the audience is, you know. Anyway, that's so that's, that's where fair. you are. Um, but you are near your you are near a harbor, you can see the sea and you can see the mountains and you can see the river and the the uh, the day is yours. Well, if if I think that if Sophia and Lydia are given the reign to lead, I mean, I don't want to speak for Lydia, but I know Sophia would head back to her boat because she wants to make sure Odie's okay. Yeah, I definitely want to go back to the boat. I've been on land for way too long. So you head back to the harbor where yeah. your boat is. Would you like to describe it? Sure. So it is a a keel boat. It's kind of it look kind of has the vibe of a kind of a junk where it has like the little like the one um like cabin that is like enough room for everybody like to maybe sleep in and fit in. But otherwise, like there's, it's it's not a giant sailing ship. It's enough that like the two of us have been able to to caption it. How how big did we say it was? Probably like thirty by thirty or um, it's it's like. I think it's like 20 feet wide and from tip to tail, probably 50, 60 feet. Yeah. So it's one that like the two of us could crew ourselves, but obviously like if you help with us, we're like, we, she's like, she started like going like, well, you know, you could do this or you could pull the mask. Just like giving you jobs as uh -huh. you do it. And also it definitely looks like it has been rebuilt multiple times. And that if you're familiar with the mending spell at all, it's true, true. I think you are, oh, right? yes. you know, mending, I, you can tell that she has used mending to like add pieces of wood here and there and like re like re weld it essentially. And then, um, Lydia, what, what kind of like personalizations do you think that you would have put on the boat? Um, definitely crude drawings. Um, almost like one panel comics. Um, but just drawings all over the place. Uh, uh, some of them are a little randier. A lot of them, a <laughs> lot of them are of Thassa and all of the drawings of Thassa um, have like hearts around them and stars. <laughs> uh, there are pictures of Lydia with, with, uh, with Thassa where it's just Thassa looking like the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen and Lydia doing nothing but hard eyes. Um, <laughs> maybe in a couple they're holding hands, but she won't tell you that's really what it is. She'll say, oh, she's handing me something, but really it's because they're holding hands. <laughs> And then there's also uh, a little crab. Is it the same crab that Ruben that you described same earlier? Same crab. The audience will recognize the same crab from earlier. Yeah. And uh, Sophia runs over to it all excited and picks him up. And she's like, there's my boy. Here's my little boy. Did you eat? Did you eat? And also, by the way, I can communicate with him because I have, uh, as, a, as a triton, I have the ability to communicate basic can we, with, with sea-breathing animals. And so I'm like, did you eat? Are you good? Are you happy? And uh, it's like it's like shaking with excitement. Its spines oh, on its yeah. back are are wriggling, and it and it it's it uh, it in in its crab speak it goes. Yes, I, I got I got some snacks. I'm good. Yay! I'm glad you're home. Right. Where were you? Go play with Aunt Lydia. Go play with Aunt Lydia. Oh, we got arrested again. It's fine. Uh, you know, Aunt Lydia. You know. How so it can I clarify real quick? This is Lydia's ship ship, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is my <laughs> ship ship. <laughs> um, so a couple questions. Lydia, can can Lydia understand Odie? Uh, Lydia does not understand Odie, but Lydia loves Odie anyway. <laughs> does Odie love Lydia? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Odie turns and like the eyes rotate on top of Odie's head and it scuttles over to Lydia and, and is very excited. 
I, and Lydia picks Odie up. Oh, good, 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 good baby. Who's the best baby on the boat? It's you. That was her song. And it, and it cuddles <laughs> up against you and it looks at the two new people and shrinks back into its shell a little bit. No, no, oh, Odie, you're okay. fine. Uh, Tuturu um, and Astaroth. This is Odysseus. He is my crab and he is very cute. And he's the best crab and he's the smartest crab in the world. Hi, Odysseus. And she'll reach out her hand. And I'm Tuturu. I'm looking forward to stuffing you. Hi. <laughs> no, what? No, he's our, he's our pet. I think that's a good place to end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us <laughs> for the first episode of The Broken Pact. Uh, Theros. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so good, Ashlyn. <laughs> I am so happy we're back, everybody. Um, please tell everybody uh, where they can where they can follow you and find you. All right. Uh, well, first off, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon, uh, where I tweet about stuff sometimes. And uh, I am also a uh, I'm a I write ads on the Command Zone, so you know, keep an eye out for that. It might show up in things at some point. All right, you can find me on uh, in, on Twitter at Riley J Silverman and on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And uh, I am actually now a member of the Improv Group Ripley Improv. I'm very excited about that. Wow! Um, and so uh, right now, as a troupe, we're doing a show called um, Heartbeats. That's every Friday. It's an improvised medical dramedy. Uh, it is basically an imp an improv show that is essentially what if Grey's Anatomy had no script. And actually, uh, Terry Gamble, who is on this channel on uh, Salt Bay, is actually a regular, a oh, full-time nice. cast member on it. Uh, I have not joined the cast yet. I'll be guest starring later this season and then doing more stuff with the group soon. But that's our biggest thing right now. And uh, I have a cool D&D thing in the works that I'll be real. Maybe next week I'm going to reveal it. Ooh, Ooh. Nice. nice. Very nice. Um, I'm Danielle Radford. You can find me on Twitter at Danielle Radford. If you're ever looking for weird, dumb things I might be doing, that's where you can find me. Or um, you can check out them Honest trailers. I help write them. And uh, so please uh, watch them. Uh, some of them are very funny. All of them. All of them are funny. Them. Ah, <laughs> that Romeo and Juliet only, the pentameter is so funny. <laughs> oh, God. I had to bust that out. I haven't done that since college. Nice. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. You can also find me on Instagram as RAR. It's Ashlyn where I'm posting a ton of snail videos right now because I've now become a snail mama. I saw that. <laughs> and uh, you can also find my voiceover stuff at ashlynrose.com. And I've been your Therosian chorus, Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. Uh, a reminder that all games, no masters here on Saving Throw Show is our GMless branch of the RPG Exploration Society. And they have an all new episode this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific right here on Saving Throw Show. Uh, I want to thank my cast. I want to thank my sponsors. I want to thank you, the audience, for tuning in for the first episode of Theros the Broken Pact. And we do certainly hope that you join us here next week. Um, I, I, I assume we're going to raid somebody. Um, so please do stick around and support other members of the, uh, the uh, Fantasy Network and other role-playing game shows. And thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you very soon. Have a good night, everybody.